Hey there YouTube, welcome to another Tech Me Out video. Thank you so much for being here. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when new videos come out. I would like to start off with an apology. I have been a little sick in the past couple of days. My voice may sound a little coarse and I am still coughing so I might need to edit my coughs out of the video. I do apologize. The topic of today's video is Unified Device Adoptions. Well, what is there to talk about really? Because if you just plug in a device, it will automatically contact your controller and all you will have to do is go into the web interface and hit the adopt button, right? Well, in most cases, you are correct. Because if you have your device and your controller on the same network, that is being referred to as layer 2 adoption and it should work just out of the box. If you have a more complex network with several VLANs, and the devices and the controller are not on the same network or maybe your controller is even hosted in the cloud or somewhere off-site. Layer 3 adoption is what you will have to do. Ubiquiti has a wonderful knowledge base article which I will provide the link in the description and we will have to manipulate a few configurations in order to get the adoption process as smooth as it is in layer 2. I would like to demonstrate a few use cases, so let's jump into the computer and see how this is done both manually and how to do it that it will work automatically. Let's go! Alright, so we are talking about Unify Layer 3 Adoptions. And as a reminder, layer 3 adoptions mean that our Unify devices and our Unify controller are not on the same network. Maybe uh, your device, uh, your controller is in the cloud or maybe it's somewhere off-site. Uh, layer 3 adoption is referred to by Ubiquiti as uh, layer 3 adoption is the process of adopting Unify device to a remote Unify controller. You might use layer 3 adoption for controllers located in the cloud. So, unlike layer, layer 2 adoptions, where the devices and the controller are on the same network, if you try to adopt to a remote controller or a cloud controller, your devices might not magically show up on your controller ready to be adopted. We will need to somehow tell the devices where to go in order to be adopted in the controller. We can do it manually, we can do it in some cases automatically, but we will need to do something. So wh what I did is I took this Unify APACLR access point, I factory defaulted it, I, co I connected it to my PoE switch and now it's ready to be adopted and we will demonstrate a few things using this access point. So, the first thing I, uh, uh, we would like to talk about is the most simplest uh, uh, of adoptions that is very similar to uh, uh, layer 2 adoptions. And this is uh, where uh, you need to uh, manually tell the device where to go in order to report to. Uh, uh, this can be used even in layer 2 adoptions if, if uh, the device is not uh, showing in your uh, controller. And it's very simple, we can just use the discovery tool, if you are not familiar with it, we can just Google search for Unify Discovery Tool Chrome, it's a Chrome extension. The first result will take you to the Chrome Web Store. It will not say launch the app because mine is already installed, it will say installed or get app. And let's, let's actually launch it. I don't like to work with this discovery tool because in some cases I found that it's not really working but the way to do it is to click here on Unify Family and as you can see it already found my Unify uh, access point and you see sometimes when you click action the menu doesn't come out I don't like to use it I like to use SSH so what I will do is open a command prompt and type SSH the default username is UBNT at the IP address of the device and the default password is also UBNT. From here we are inside the device we will need to use the command setInform uh, 
in order to do in order to know what is the proper setting form URL that we will need to supply here it's easy we can just go to our unify cloud portal right here this is my AWS hosted uh, unify controller and instead of clicking launch I will just click on this row and go to the details tab and here is my inform URL I will just copy it go to the uh, SSH window and type set dash inform space and I'll paste in the inform URL click enter and as you see an adoption request was sent it will take about two or three minutes even less and as you can see my device is already a, a pending adoption I can go ahead and adopt it keep in mind this is my uh, cloud uh, AWS uh, uh, Unify controller in a matter of minutes this uh, 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 this access point will be adopted but this was a very manual process it applies even when your layer 2 adoption don't work doesn't work but it's still a, a very manual process so how can we make it a little more automatic because right now we only uh, uh, deployed a single device what if we're deploying a hundred or a thousand do we really want to go into each device SSH window and type the inform URL uh, I believe that uh, all of us would like to avoid such a thing this is exactly where this knowledge base article comes into play and I will scroll down a little bit because up until uh, up until now they are only talking about adopting uh, from the discovery and from the mobile app this is how Unify uh, recommends doing uh, layer 3 adoptions it's either via DNS or DHCP option 43 in my experience the two scenarios are good for very slightly different use cases DNS is excellent for uh, Active Directory domain environments I will try to show uh, uh, I will try to show it uh, with my uh, uh, lab Active Directory and DHCP option 43 now uh, you might use a, a unify, a, a unify a DHCP like a, a, an edge router or a, or a USG you might use PFSense or whatever your vendor is the way to set DHCP option 43 is a little bit different and they do give examples down below for how to do it in Cisco CLI, in Mikrotik, in PFSense I have run PFSense for several years and I used option 43 as suggested in this article and it works just fine okay so DNS is excellent for domain environments option 43 is if you're not uh, on a domain environment and you need to uh, give your device a way to find the Unify controller as, as the second it uh, gets an IP address by the way there is nothing wrong in using both of them this is something I have done and now I would like to take uh, this access point that is already being provisioned I will wait until it's connected and I will try to use option 43 um, all I need to do is to enter in my DHCP server the public IP address we need the public IP address and for this case it's supposed to be a static IP address that will not change we need the public IP address and enter it in the option 43 my DHCP server in this home office is a UDM which is its own Unify controller but we will disregard that okay now the device is connected we are almost ready to factory reset it once again what I need to do is take my public IP address of my AWS cloud controller and put it as an option 43 IP address and I will show you exactly how to do it right here in settings in networks in local networks the, the access point is currently on the IoT network and uh, I specifically put it on this network because it's isolated and can't reach any other network it's, it's as if it's in some client location and uh, um, can't reach any other network 
down below sorry down below we'll see this is option 43 and once we have the IP address and we'll click on apply changes what I will do is I will factory reset the unify access point it will reboot itself it will get an IP address and it will automatically report to my cloud controller without me needing to use uh, the discovery tool or SSH or anything like that let's go ahead and forget the device now in most cases forgetting the device is as good as also uh, uh, doing a factory reset so what we will see right now is after a few minutes the device is now uh, wiping itself and it will come back online to the network it will receive the option 43 IP address and we will see it again in this window after about two or three minutes what I will do is I will pause the recording right now and I will resume it once the device is uh, uh, reporting back and if the device hasn't uh, factory reset itself for some reason I will go ahead and do it and we will uh, uh, meet again in this window with the device ready to be adopted All right, so as you can see, we haven't done anything other than supply the option 43 in the DHCP configuration. And once the device has rebooted itself, it's again ready to be adopted completely automatically. And it's, uh, it, it's, it's a very good and viable option. Right now, uh, we only have one device, but if you're deploying hundreds of devices, even dozens of devices, it will, save you a, it will save you a lot of precious time not needing to go into each device SSH and setting the inform URL. This is option 43. Now, in regards to, uh, to the DNS, I will uh, go into my uh, uh, demo Active Directory and I will show you that I already have a DNS entry in my DNS right here the devices are looking for a, a host name of Unify if your domain name is something whatever it will get the, uh, the domain name from uh, the DNS server and it will look who has Unify dot uh, your domain name and it will contact this, uh, 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 this device and report to it so again what we will do right now is uh, adopt the device after it's done adopting provisioning it, it's connected I will again factory reset this device but this time I will assign the port it's connected to uh, on the POE switch to be internal into my network and this is where uh, you will see that the device will automatically pop up in my UDM controller because it got an answer from who has the Unify FQDN. All right, I will pause the recording right now and I will be back once we are ready to reprovision, uh, to readopt this device in my home office UDM controller. All right, so the device has uh, factory resetted itself and now it got an IP address from our internal network and since I have uh, the DNS record, a record, to, to, uh, to resolve unify dot my domain and give the, the device an IP address. We can see the device now shows up in my UDM uh, uh, controller ready to be adopted. So let's go ahead and adopt it. And now it will soon provision and uh, uh, get all its uh, settings. And by the way, if you'll see here in my networks, in my LAN network, I got the domain name because the device needs to know what, under what domain to search for Unify dot and the rest of the domain. It must get a DNS server because if you want, if, if the device IP, IP address list from the DHCP server 
in a domain environment won't include DNS servers, it won't be able to resolve uh, who has unify dot uh, domain name. So DNS servers in a domain environment in DHCP is critical. And also the domain name recommended uh, uh, so that the uh, lookup will be a little bit faster. And also, just as a, uh, let's say, fallback, I'm also utilizing option 43, but this time I'm pointing my device to my internal IP address of the controller, which is 192.188.1.1. Uh, uh, in this case, I'm just covering all my bases. Um, let's go back to the devices. We can see that the device is already connected. I will give the device an, a, a static IP. I don't want it to stay a, a, in a DHCP a, a, a address. So let's go to network. Let's say static IP. I want to give it dot two five four subnet mask gateway. DNS, very important. And DNS suffix also in a domain environment, very important. And I'm also changing the device name because I have sort of, sort of a naming convention. And that's it guys, that is the whole, uh, uh, let's say, process of layer 3 adoption. It's not really difficult, it just requires some, uh, 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 some configurations on our part, be it manually setting the set in form URL in the SSH, or using option 43 or a, a DNS if we are in a domain environment, and that's it. After we have done uh, our part in the layer 3 process, all future devices, be it 5, 10, or 100 and 1000, they will all just show up magically in our cloud uh, or uh, off-site Unify controller, same as it was if we were on layer 2 adoption where the devices and controller are on the same network. That's it, that's all the magic behind layer 3 adoption. I hope uh, you like this video. Again, if you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and stay tuned for our future uh, videos. If I have done something that you think I should have done otherwise, please let me know in the comments below. I love to hear other opinions. I love to learn from, uh, uh, from uh, viewers and subscribers. Please let me know in the comments. Take care. Bye-bye for now.